Alrighty guys, back with another gun wall review. Today we got something really special. We got a pre-1994 assault weapons band calico. This one here is the M900, the carbine. They also made this in a pistol version with no collapsible stock. Now, calico originally made this gun to try to gain some military contracts in the 80s. Well, they made it, um, it didn't do well on the uh, military trials for a couple reasons. The main reason is the elephant in the room. Hey, were y'all two knocking off? Sorry about that, my cats are acting up. Uh, one of the main reasons the elephant in the room is the magazine system, and I'll get to that in a minute. Anyways, so it didn't do too well in the military trials because of some unreliability issues and they tried selling it on the civilian market which didn't really have that much success either so what happened is they kept selling until 1994 and what happened in 1994 is the Clinton administration passed the assault weapons ban which classified this as an assault weapons and of course Calico went bankrupt because they could no longer had a market and they had to shut down well in recent years, I believe in 2002, 2004, Calico came back. I believe they're producing this gun now. However, the original pre-ban carbines, like this one here, go for a pretty good premium. I'm going to put a link in the description to see if I can find some maybe gun trader or something like that. Find a pre-ban and not one of the newer ones um, for the link in the description if you want one. Now, this gun is really fascinating for a couple different reasons. First of all, it looks nuts. It's it's crazy looking. You look at it, it's some Star Wars blaster looking stuff. And its mechanism is very, very neat. Now, I don't know much about the operating system on this, but let's just start, first of all, with the magazine. So, it's got this really interesting cylindrical drum type magazine. It's got a pair of release latches on each side. Press, and lift up, and the magazine comes off. Now, this magazine is somewhat similar to the, uh, kind of like an AK drum magazine in some of the aspects that it works. They made these guns in both 9mm and 22 long rifle. This particular one is a 9mm. This drum actually holds 50 rounds. They made a 100 round uh, magazine as well. And as you can see, the way that the buttstock is actually set up, 
it actually has a recess for that 100 round drum to stick out. Back to the magazine. So, the way this works is you have a follower. First of all, you got a tab here, this little button. It releases spring pressure. Just like that. So now, it, the spring is completely released. You got a little lever here. You actually pop this lever out like this and you rotate it until the follower shows up in the front here. You have to get a little bit of pressure for it to pop. Ah, there it is. And then from there, unlike a AK style drum magazine, it loads just like any other magazine. Um, let me see if I can get some rounds here and I'll show you. Uh, you know what, actually I have a clip um, of me loading this earlier. I'll just use that. I'll insert it right here. Anyways, so once you loaded your 50 rounds in, you pop your little lever back out. And it does have things where you can twist it by hand, but you give it 10 full rotations. And what that does is it gives the spring pressure inside the magazine enough force to feed the rounds. Uh, one of the reasons why this gun did not do so well in the military trials was because the magazine had a tendency to be unreliable. And you're seeing one of the clips, um, well you've seen in one of the clips, I actually had a problem with this. And I believe what it was is I loaded this magazine a little bit past the 50 round capacity. So when I wound it up, it only let me get, I think, eight wines on it. So when it got down to those last five or six rounds, I think was in there, the spring didn't have enough pressure to feed it reliably. So, and of course the 100 round uh, magazines were even more unreliable. I don't know what the capacity is on the 22 long rifle. I assume it's probably about the same. However, you can fit the 100 rounds a 22 long mag in this drum. You didn't need the long one like with the 9mm. So, that's the way the drum is uh, for this magazine. And I'll get to the sights in a little while, but the magazine is actually important for the sights. Next, let's move on to the gun itself. Another interesting feature, if you notice, the rounds feed from the top, from the bottom of the magazine down, and they actually eject straight down out of the bottom of the gun. They're not flying up or to the side either which way, they go straight down, and to be honest, you don't ever even notice this gun firing. Uh, when the you don't notice the brass being ejected because it goes straight down it's out of your view it's not obstructing your view it's not hitting you in the face like it did me with the desert eagle um, so that's actually really neat the bolt is on this side so you can charge it with your left hand keeping your hand on the trigger you have a basic bolt hole open here now this one's a little tricky to do because you have to push the bolt all the way back past the lock and then you have to push it down like that. It's a non-reciprocating charge handle. It does not move with the bolt. And you see the firing pin for the 9mm actually sticks out when you have the bolt back. I'm not sure on how the firing mechanism works in this gun. Um, but the rest of the system is just neat. I assume, judging by the lack of any kind of... Uh, easier. By the lack of... If you look here, actually, it looks like it may be, yeah, it looks like a, a blowback, just basic blowback system, it looks like. Right here, around the barrel, okay, yeah, it's a, it's a basic blowback system, right around the barrel, it's got a recoil spring, and I assume when the firearm fires, it has a, yes, it has two operating rods right here. I assume there's a plate that attaches to this spring, so when the f bolt, when it fires, the 90mm, the uh, recoil transfers into the bolt, pushing the bolt backwards. These operating rods probably attach to a lug that's on the spring, and that gives it the spring tension to return back. I'm not sure how the firing pin 
uh, the firing pin works in the bolt. I can't deduce anything like this from looking at it. Besides that, it looks like it's a basic um, blow up and sit, uh, blow back system. So to release it, the bolt right there, your chamber is good to go. Basic ambidextrous safety right there in front of the trigger. Uh, I have to say it is a little tricky to grip because it is right up against this uh, ejector well. So if you had gloves or something, I could easily see how that would, you know, strip off a little bit, be a little hard, uh, hard to grip it to flip into safe to fire mode. Uh, well, flip into safe back into fire probably won't be a problem. Now the next thing is this. Uh, I'm reluctant to call it a stock because it's so one purpose. So before I get to the stock, I have to explain the sights and why the stock is more or less useless. So when you pop your mag on, you're going to notice that's a front sight post. The sights are actually attached to the magazine. And I don't know if you can see, it's a real basic. It's almost like pistol sights. Uh, the rear sights are completely unadjustable whatsoever. So when you swap out your magazine, if you have multiple magazines, you're swapping out your rear sights. Now the front sights do have a nice positive click, elevation, and windage adjustment on the front sight. And that's nice. Now, here's the bad thing about these sights. These sights are basically like a pistol sights. They even have the same length between the sights as a pistol uh, and this gun can be held and fired as a pistol even in the carbine con configuration now they did make a pistol version that did not have the buttstock now what's bad about this is the buttstock itself completely collapsed if unless you hold this like a pistol which because of the long barrel is slightly front heavy um, it's kind of awkward to, to aim and hold now if you shoulder it like this, you can't use the sights. They're too close to your face, um, they're blurry, and they're pretty much unusable. The bad thing about this stock, if you notice, it has rails that connects the stock, connects into here. Got a real simple lever, pull that, and release it, and then that's it. It only has one lock position extended. Now you could, in theory, drill more holes if you wanted to bastardize it somewhat to make more stock positions but the bad thing about this is this gun has a pretty long uh, length of pull if you have if you're a short person like I am uh, this is kind of long you can sight the sights perfectly like this but like I said it can be slightly uncomfortable to shoot and of course it won't hold in any other position now to close it same thing you just hold that slide it back in if you had one of these and you wanted to change length, it would be easy because this rod is just hollow. It'd just be a fa factor of, you know, drilling some of these little oblong shaped holes into it. Anyway, so that's that part. That's what's kind of bad about the sights. That's what I didn't really like about the sights. Um, and let's move around to the muzzle. Smooth, nice smooth barrel. It's got some good thickness to it. And it's got a compensator. I, I don't know why this thing does not have enough recoil to justify uh, needing a compensator. I mean, it is 9 millimeters, so it's not a lot of recoil. Uh, now, this gun didn't do well in the military trials uh, because of the magazine. And it didn't necessarily do too well on the civilian market either because of the finicky magazine and the bad sights. Something, in my opinion, I think with some slight rearranging, this gun probably could have been a nice compact um, sub-machine gun or a, you know, sports shooter. And I think it would have been relatively easy if you converted this gun into a bullpup, move the trigger assembly in front of the ejector well, and then had the magazine come down at the bottom, and then it eject out the side, I think this gun probably would have been a lot more ergonomic and uh, easier to handle, easier to shoot, definitely easier to sight. You could have put a, you could have put a, a flat top Picatinny rail up top, 
could have had flip up iron sights. It would have been a lot more low profile. Um, the balancing would have been a little better on the carbine. It, it probably would have balanced out perfectly if you made this thing a bullpup. Uh, because right there, and it's just pretty balanced right there. So if you would have had the pistol grip right here, this thing probably could have been nicely balanced and compact. Um, and it definitely would have, uh, wouldn't have felt as tall. Uh, now, these guns, especially these pre-band ones like this one here, are kind of pricey and hard to find. Um, like I said, they did start producing them in, back in the early 2000s again. I don't know if they're still in production. I will uh, find out if I have a link for it. Uh, but if you want one, they're fun guns. Uh, they're more of a uh, range gun and more of a you know impress your friends kind of gun. Uh, conversation piece is what I would call this gun. It's too... This drum system isn't reliable enough to really be considered for a self-defense purpose um, I wouldn't use it for self-defense it is fun to shoot it is very fun to shoot and it's a really neat conversation piece so if you want something as a conversation piece and a range gun something to take out show off and uh, just be cool go ahead and find yourself one of these they're, uh, they're great for that purpose right there on their own um, otherwise than that very limited what I could say as far as their purpose there is another composite carbine uh, about the same size that is much cheaper that I would recommend more and y'all are gonna hate me for this but a uh, high point uh, 9mm carbines I've had uh, I've had one before I've had one in 45 ACP and I loved that thing they are way better than their pistols I wouldn't recommend a pistol for anything but definitely one of the carbines would be awesome and it feels a lot like this but it's a little bit more utilitarian and uh, a little bit more reliable to be honest um, the only bad thing with those is you only get a I think a, a 10 round single stack mag for those but anyways so that's it for today's um, gun wall view on the Calico M900 uh, 90mm carbine I've got some more stuff coming up uh, here soon, so stay tuned for that. I'll see y'all next time. Be sure to come over here and subscribe. And of course you have to hit the little bell, otherwise we won't show up in your notifications each time we post a new video. And check us out on Facebook and give us a like, we post all of our content there as well, as long as some pictures that we take. Speaking of Instagram, you can check us out on Instagram too. We post all of our pictures, some short clips that don't end up on YouTube, along with a little bit of funny stuff, some game recipes, and we're also on Twitter. You can check us out on there, some of our posts. We keep everyone kind of uh, in the queue along what we're on to, and what we're up to, and what we're doing. Um, along with some other posts about some other things that we like. So be sure to check us out on Patreon. We could always use the support. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up. But that stuff kind of isn't cheap. So every little bit of support helps. And will help us get out some good content for everyone to see.